In this video, I'm going to demonstrate using the surrogate key transformation for generating an incrementing value that you can use as a key when performing use cases or scenarios that include things like loading a uh, dimension table in your data warehouse where you want to have a non-business surrogate key included with that data. Now, I had a request to demonstrate this because I have a couple of videos and some blog posts for samples that I have put out recently that you can find that you'll be able to find pretty easily that are uh, slowly changing dimension uh, scenarios. And in those examples, the way that I generated surrogate keys was I chose to use the derived column with a hashing function to generate unique keys. And that's certainly a valid uh, use case. That's one way to do it. Um, but I had some requests to demonstrate how to use the surrogate key transformation. And so let's do that. Now, the difference in the technique that I used in the SCDs is that uh, in those demos, I was using the hash function, which means that I'm always going to get a unique key, and it's not going to be incrementing. Uh, the surrogate key transformation within Data Factory Mapping Data Flow is uh, specifically a, um, a incrementing value style of key generation. Um, so you always pick a starting value, and then it always increment by one from there. So what you have to do if you want to use that, um, you can absolutely do that, but when you want to use the surrogate key, what you want to do is first go find the max value out of your uh, your target, your destination, or whatever source that you have that has that max value in it. So to do that, what you do is, in this example, I don't have a fully built out uh, slow change dimension uh, loader here. Instead, this is just demonstrating how to use a surrogate key, but I have a new file of a file of new employees coming in. So this file is the same that I used in the other dem uh, the other demos with my dim emp or dim employee. So I still have the same data coming in, and then I uh, have a second source, which is my dim employee existing dimension table. Again, this is the same as in the other demos. But instead of pulling in the entire schema, all I do is I go into source options, and I type in a query uh, manually here, and I'm I'm typing in I'm uh, executing select max surrogate key as max val from dimemp. So from that employee table, I'm getting the uh, last max value of surrogate key. And you can see from the data preview that it is uh, that number right there. So that is the max. So now that I have that, I can join these two things together. So I don't have a key to join because the only value I have out of my uh, div employee query here is max val. Now there would be a value, at least one of those values, um, in uh, the data at some point, but it's not stored in my source files because that's generated on the fly through my ETL. So instead what I do in my join is I just do a cross-join. So if you go over to cross-join, you can uh, put in an expression. And I just want it to always be true so I can attach that value, that max value, to every row. And uh, so what I did was I just said that um, uh, 1 equals 1, so it's always true, and i always join that. Now you'll see that in the preview that what happens is that uh, ADF will always add that max value to every row. So there's my max value coming from previously. Now I have it, so now I'm good to go. So my surrogate key is going to generate from one. I don't need to change that, keep that as it is. Just add a surrogate key as it is by default. And then in your derived column, so you do a derived column after your surrogate key, and in there you're going to modify that surrogate key. Surrogate key is the name of the value that I'm creating, the name of the key column. What I'm going to do with that is I will just add the max value to it. So now we'll always start one value higher than it was before. So the formula is simply surrogate key plus max val. And I'm just overwriting surrogate keys. Now the new value of the surrogate key is going to be, you'll see over here, incrementing by one. So this was the max value out of the database. And now it's going to load uh, 79808182833. So that's how you do an incrementing value with um, surrogate key when you have a database that contains the max value. Let me show you in case you have a situation where you either are storing that max value in a file as a config file or a parameter file, which is one option. Another option is you may have um, files, maybe not working with databases, because that query box in map mapping data flow is only going to be available to you under source options for SQL, uh, for database queries or database sources. So for file sources, if I have a um, file that contains the uh, max value. What you have to do is you uh, connect to that file. So this happens to be my uh, employee file again, and you need to do a manual um, aggregate transformation. So select max uh, emp ID or surrogate key is essentially you writing your own aggregation, right? The aggregation can be done from an aggregate function, an aggregate transformation. So my aggregate transformation is simply 
no group by because I want all of the, um, I want it to look across the entire data set and aggregate using max. So my aggregate is max employee ID. I'm using employee ID because on my file, I don't have surrogate key, but you could do a surrogate key here if you had surrogate key in that file. Now what I get from my data preview will look exactly the same, max val, just a different value because my file has different data in it. All right, so that's my max. Now the rest of the data flow is exactly the same. I join using cross join, saying one equals one. I create my surrogate key starting at one, and then I add those values together. My max value, I, I did protect here a little bit. I was a little bit defensive. I said two integer on both, so I cast right here in the expression, but works exactly the same. So that is um, how to do the uh, surrogate key within a, a data flow in ADF uh, mapping data flow. Thanks for watching.